Hello fellow imagers. Today we are going to look at autofocus in Voyager. I'm going to assume you already have watched the previous video or that you have autofocus set up in Voyager and you have run the first light wizard. In this case I am using a simulator profile so I'm going to click the connect button on the startup form and get all my equipment connected. Okay we have all green that's good. Let's just take a look at setup and you can see what kind of uh, configuration I have here on the autofocus form. We click the autofocus button in the setup form to get to the autofocus configuration panel. I am using an ASCOM focuser and I am using the RoboFire which are Voyager's built-in autofocus methods. If you select the Sky X, at focus 2, at focus 3, focus max or maximum DL for your autofocus routine, you can still autofocus from Voyager. You will have uh, some limited options compared to using the built-in autofocus. Okay, so at this point, if you have your configuration settings the way you want them, let's take a look at running autofocus in Voyager. We can do that from several, uh, several places in Voyager. We can go to the on-the-fly panel, and under the actions area, you see things like autofocus, local field, actual position, acquire star, etc. These are all autofocus actions that you can run at any time. Also, when you, and we'll go back to those in more detail. Also, when you run a sequence, so you have everything set up to record a number of images with different filters, different exposures, and different configuration settings, there is a focus tab. On the focus tab, and we'll go over this as well, you can specify the type of autofocus, how often to autofocus, how to find your focus star, and just about everything else you need. Also, within a drag script, there is an autofocus action. If you look in the available actions panel on the drag script editor, autofocus is one of the choices. And here we will show you how you can autofocus with a drag script action. And finally, on the monitor tab under the ribbon, if a sequence or drag script is running, you will have the ability to inject an autofocus into the sequence, which means when the next, uh, the next available opportunity, such as when an exposure finishes, perform an autofocus. So you would normally have the autofocus automatically happening within certain intervals in your sequence, but if you're watching and you want to inject an extra focus, you can do that from this monitor tab. So let's go back to the on the fly section and start reviewing the actions that are available to perform an autofocus on the fly. Down here on the lower left area of the actions panel, you see a gear icon. The gear icons are where you configure any of these actions. And this will let us pick our on the fly focus star. And you can pick a star using the object finder. And you can pick a star uh, on the left using J2000 coordinates for autofocus before the meridian. And you can pick a different star for autofocus after the meridian. You can also swap the coordinates by clicking the swap button. And you have a separate find panel for the left hand and the right hand focus stars. Also, make sure you familiarize yourself with the documentation available on the Voyager Wiki. So that's at voyager.tourstar.net or by clicking the Wiki menu item under the Help tab on the voyageraastro.com website. In the Wiki, you will find detailed instructions for everything we cover here in the video. So for example, for the on-the-fly functions and actions that we are about to go over, we have a focus star action section of the wiki, which explains what I just said. And we have an autofocus actions area of the wiki, which explains all these actions. So let's go back to Voyager itself, but just keep in mind that the wiki is a valuable resource. So now if we have finished selecting a focus star, and there are ways that Voyager will automatically find the focus star for you. So this is only necessary if you want that level of control and you would like to specify your focus star. 
you can click go to focus star this will slew your mount to the coordinates that you specified with this gear icon before the meridian after the meridian and if you click go to focus star it'll slew the mount to those coordinates and that's it so it will assume that when you tell the mount to slew to a set of coordinates that it actually does end up there precise pointing on the other hand will slew the mount to the coordinates that you specify then it will take an image plate solve the image and re-slew the mount if necessary to get within the errors that you specified in setup for precise pointing so this is a way to get the star more accurately centered for focusing as long as the focus star is within the central region of your image and that's something we go over in the autofocus setup how big that central region is uh, that's good enough Voyager will find the star and perform the autofocus then under here we also have autofocus on the star and return to your target so if you click this button it will go to the focus star do the, the autofocus and then return to the current position before you press the button uh, up here on the right side of the actions we have autofocus robofire local field so as you recall from previous videos uh, robofire or voyager has two robofire uh, autofocus routines that are built in one of them called local field does an average focus of all the stars in the field and this is best if you are trying to get uniform focus or the best average focus across your entire field of view like if you're focusing on a nebula or some other large object you also have autofocus at actual position so this will not slew the mount it will take an image it will look for an appropriate star near the middle of the image and it will perform a v-curve autofocus at that position so the v-curve is the single star autofocus then you have autofocus with voyager's acquire star so acquire star will slew the mount to a nearby star usually within a couple of degrees in the sky that meets the criteria that you set up in the setup panel for autofocus so this will automatically center a an appropriate star perform a v-curve a single star autofocus and then return to the position that the mount was pointing at before you click the button if you use focus max for autofocus this next button will do something basically the same as autofocus with Voyager acquire star but it will use the focus max acquire star so that means if you're using focus max and you click here focus max takes over it will slew the mount to an appropriate star for focusing it'll do its autofocus and then it'll return the mount to your target position prior to starting the acquire star with focus max routine and that's it so these are all the buttons that are available when you're not running a sequence or a drag script and you would like to perform an autofocus now let's look at autofocus from inside of a sequence so we go over here and click the gear icon to bring up a sequence definition this one's been pre-populated already with uh, some light frames that i'm taking and down here in the sequence preferences if you click the focus tab these are all the settings that relate to autofocus and how it will happen within the sequence first off you can pick the focus method so we can pick to use voyager robostar as our default focus that is the single star v curve focus method good for getting the sharpest focus in the center of your field we can pick local field which is the average best focus across the entire field and if you click focus star as your option for your focus method that's when you're going to manually specify the focus star you can use the finders to look up your star's coordinates before and after the meridian and you can also just use one of these sides and if you do that if you leave this one empty it'll use the star on the right and if you leave this empty it'll use the star on the left these are the positions before and after the right ascension of your target in that case if you are using focus max you can click here and use focus max's acquire star which as we just explained will let focus max pick a focus star slew to it and then come back to your target or you can click focus on place and in this case this says to use the autofocus method that you specified back in setup 
So if I was using the SkyX at Focus 2, at Focus 3, Maxim DL, Focus Max without a Choir Star, this method would uh, initiate that focusing routine. And when it is finished, your sequence will continue. In the next line here, we see use low precision pointing for pointing at the focus star. You check this box, it says you don't need to be exactly centered, or we don't need to have the focus star exactly centered when we slew to it. So let's say we want to go within three times our error that was specified in setup. So if I specified an error of 50 arc seconds in setup as my maximum error for the precise pointing routine, here I would go to 150 by setting it to a multiple of three. And that's, that's generally plenty. You don't need to have your focus star exactly centered in the image for autofocus to work. It just needs to be somewhere visible in the center within the box size that's specified in the autofocus setup. And in the next line, we have the max HFD variation percentage allowed. This is the percentage of difference from the prior autofocus to the current autofocus that is okay, that is considered okay, an acceptable result. So if you had an HFD last time of three and this time of six and your allowed percentage was 45%, this would raise an error saying something happened. Your focus shouldn't change by that amount. And over on the next item here, we have Force Robostar on first focus. So if you were using local field or any other method and you wanted to use the V-curve only on your first sequence focus, you could check this box. Over here, we have on local field focus error, use Robostar. So this says if you try to do the average focus across the entire field of view and there's an error, go back and use the V-curve as your fallback. So rather than raising an error for the overall sequence, give the V-curve a try first. And we just covered the focus star setting, so we can skip over this one. And here we have the focus filter. So this says either use the filter that you are currently imaging with, so in this case, LRGB, it would use one of these filters depending on where I was in the sequence or pick a default filter from everything available. I like to focus and I suspect most people will just using the actual filter. And in this box, finally, we have the events that trigger an autofocus routine. We can focus by slot if you're using the group by slot sequence method. So over here, Group by slot is one of the options. This says do all these first slot exposures. In this case, I had five, so it would do all five of these. And then it would start doing the reds, and it would do five of those. If I had focus by slot picked, then an autofocus would happen before I shot my first red image, before I shot my first green, and before I shot my first blue using the same filter that I'm going to be using for my images. So this is a good one to have. Uh, in most cases, even with par focal filters, it's not a bad practice. It's a good practice to go ahead and run a focus before starting to image with a new filter. It only takes a couple minutes. And uh, then we have some other options here. We can refocus every time we've done a certain count of exposures. We can refocus every count of minutes. We can refocus when the temperature changes by a certain amount of degrees Celsius, or sometimes we get an ADU uh, value returned from some focusers. We can also refocus every time the target changes its altitude by a certain amount. So just you can check as many of these boxes as you want, and Voyager will refocus whenever any of these criteria are hit. And of course, it'll wait for the current exposure to finish before, uh, before performing the autofocus. That's it for autofocus within a sequence. And if you're doing a research and survey type of sequence, which is on this research tab, if you click on the gear icon, you look at the research and survey configuration tab, there is a focus tab and it has all the same options that we just went over for 
a normal sequence. There's also the ability to inject a, an autofocus action into the running sequence. So let's let's start a sequence, and I'm using the simulator, so everything's not going to work perfectly here. But if I'm running a sequence on the monitor tab, we now have lit up the autofocus option here. So I can just say use whatever filter is currently being used for imaging, or I can specify a filter. I'll just say the default. And now you see in the monitor window, request focus injection filter default sequence. So this means that at the next available opportunity, and normally this would happen when you saw an image come back and you weren't happy with the focus, it would go ahead and do an autofocus. So you don't need to stop the running sequence. You can just use this method here to inject the autofocus action. And if you click reset, then it will cancel your request for an autofocus. Finally, if we are using drag script, we can perform autofocus actions inside of our drag script. So let's go over to the drag script editor. And on the editor elements panel under actions, we have several autofocus options. Autofocus with RoboStar, precise pointing with RoboStar using the acquire star method move your focuser so you can manually specify a focuser position, or we can autofocus with local field. So if we look at these one by one, if I add autofocus with RoboStar, I get to pick the filter. I can say I'm using a color camera so I don't have a filter, or I don't have a filter even if I'm using a monochrome camera. We can use the low precision pointing, so this is the same uh, same method we talked about in the sequence where we don't really care about getting the focus star exactly in the center of our field, so we want to speed things up. And we can say autofocus in place, which says don't use acquire star to move to a focus star, just pick a star out of the field and focus on that. We click OK, and that's how you add an autofocus with RoboStar to a drag script. We also have the precise pointing action, so if you want to slew your mount to a focus star that would be picked by Voyager Acquire Star, you can just run this action in drag script. Pick the filter, you can choose low precision pointing, click OK. So this will not do the autofocus, but it will actually just move the mount. RoboFire Focus or Move To. So this lets you move your focuser to either an absolute or a relative position specified in the number of steps. And if you're doing relative, you can choose in or out. And finally, autofocus with local field. So as you recall, this is the multi-star autofocus that looks for the best average focus across the field. Very simple specification. Pick a filter, or it's a color camera, or no filter at all. Click OK, and this will cause a local field autofocus to happen when this action is hit in your drag script. And that's how you can inject an autofocus using drag script. And of course, you can also run a sequence from drag script. And if you run a sequence, then all the information that you just set up in the sequence definition will be used to run your autofocus. So that's it. It's really quite simple uh, how you can use Voyager to perform autofocuses on the fly or from within a sequence or a research sequence or a drag script. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask on the forum and make sure to check out the wiki where all this information is also found. Thanks, and we hope you enjoy using Voyager for reliable automated imaging.